then what will all get money to do the next chapter? You can put some <coughs> solar panels or something on your, your uh, building. And that's another place that, where the city is doing work. Uh, this past year, uh, 2012, we put about a megawatt of uh, solar panels on three city facilities, the Beekman Garage, uh, the College Hill Rec Center, and the Permit Center on Central Park. Uh, and again, this came at no capital cost to the city. Uh, the solar power providers are willing to put bio panels, install them on your roof if you're willing to buy the power in a long-term contract. And so all we did was move some operating costs for a bank due, and now we pay a solar power provider uh, that same money or just a little less than that rate. And, uh, and so we're shifting from fossil fuels to renewable energy at no capital cost to the city. Is that just available to the city or are there residential programs like that? So that's one of the recommendations of the plan is to help on residential financing. The big piece of the problem with residential financing is it's not at the scale uh, to, you know, we're talking you know, maybe 10 kilowatts uh, mm -hmm. that would be on a typical residential install where the city's working on a megawatt. So if we get we capture those economy of scales that can make that project work. So what the city wants to do, and we're just in the beginning stages of doing this, is bundling the residential projects. So that uh, if we got a hundred residential projects all ready to go, they'd be at the equivalent price of what the city's doing, and uh, that would make the financing much easier. Uh, it would lower the cost at least by 25%, if not a third, uh, for doing it. So yes, we're, we're looking at, right now, there's not a mechanism for that, but we want to create that where working with folks like the Greater Cincinnati Energy Alliance, we can bundle that, and then it's the, the, the uh, provider saving on the marketing, um, all the other purchase, you know, they can do bulk purchasing, so that's our goal. And uh, I can say, a lot of people I talk about renewables say, well, what about wind, right? We're we gonna do wind here, you know, where is the wind farm? And we're really just not suited for that. You know, we definitely have windy days, but, uh, when you're talking about wind energy, you need that constant uh, wind or, or relatively constant wind. So up by the Great Lakes, sure, uh, in mountain areas, yeah, but uh, we're really, I think on the scale of one to 10, we're at a zero or a one when it comes to uh, wind power. We're up by the Great Lakes, I think we're a five or a six. Uh, so uh, that, that's something that, there might be some micro uh, applications of wind, but we're not gonna see a wind farm here. Yes. What about the river? Yeah, so the river people are using. Um, and Maysville, actually, one of the uh, um, uh, deregulated utilities is, is building a, uh, um, kind of retrofitting the dam out there to capture the hydropower. Hamilton already did a project uh, down, uh, downstream where they're trying to, they have a municipal utility in Hamilton, so they still own, the city owns their utility. Uh, so uh, they're trying to use that as uh, a branding mechanism for the city where you can get green power uh, from the city of Hamilton. So uh, I think they're looking to be up towards 100% green power uh, with that dam and a few other uh, resources. So people are looking at the river uh, more and more as a place to get the river. So that, that does work. Right here. Uh, transportation. Uh, the big piece there is uh, moving the human power, right? Uh, not only... Yes, sir, sorry. What about geothermal heat? You see companies that say they'll do geothermal heating, cooling. Yes. That's allowed to drill a well or something? And yes. That's allowed in the city? It is allowed in the city, yes. So, uh, we, uh, another way to call them is ground source heat pumps. Uh, some people get confused with the term geothermal. That means you're capturing, you know, Hot springs. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. No, but it's actually using the constant temperature of uh, the subsurface as a heat sink. Um, and yeah, that, that's being done in the city. In fact, there's a recommendation in the plan that all new city buildings will use geothermal uh, as their heating and cooling uh, mechanism. It increases the efficiency by a lot. There's some tax credits out there to help make that. Uh, the numbers work better on that. The payback's a little longer. And it's more in the five to ten range uh, on doing that, but more and more people are doing that. And for our climate, it makes a lot of sense because we have both heating and cooling loads. Uh, 
So is there any thought of city programs to help residents back to the work? That's a good question. Uh, a lot of those applications we see more in commercial and larger projects, but uh, there, there, there might be a certain minimum of space required in the city lot might not be big enough? There, there are some instances of that. Um, you know, there's different ways to do the loops. You know, sometimes you can do them more horizontally, and sometimes you just go straight down. And so, really, most lots of noise are not maybe in the town aspect a uh, lot. Um, obviously, there's impacts to landscaping and things like that, and the utilities. You know, no, that, that's a good comment. Yeah. So the city has a bike plan, and it's starting to really uh, tie more and more of the city together, uh, looking at something called complete streets, where streets are not just for cars. Uh, they also have uh, accommodations for bikes, pedestrians, obviously on the sidewalk, uh, and transit, uh, so that all different kinds of modes are accommodated uh, by our streets. So you see places like, um, you know, Bryanville, they have what they call a share road down there that says, hey, bikes belong right over here on this side. And then on Madison, there's that, that actual bike lane. Uh, Spring Road has a little section of, of bike lane. Uh, there's more off-road facilities now, more trails. So we we'll along Mill Creek, uh, the trails, and uh, down along Mitchell Ohio. So, you know, again, we're, the three E's work right there. You know, if you've got those short trips that biking makes sense, uh, not only are you helping your own health, right? You know, there's an obesity epidemic out there. Let's get more people out exercising. How much does it cost to ride a bike as compared to your car, you know? And, um, and then, uh, obviously, uh, you're not burning those fossil fuels on the bike. So, uh, biking is something that's uh, pretty helpful. Now, that's a place where our topography doesn't help us as much. Uh, um, where uh, a place like, I was up in Madison, Wisconsin, uh, for a conference, and, uh, I mean, that place is pretty flat, and they had to share bikes, and everyone just does, you know, college town. So it's pretty easy to get around. Uh, luckily, we do have our city buses all equipped with bike, bike racks, so if you want to use the bus to do the uphills and you use the bike for the downhills, perfectly allowed. No one's going to check on it. You go for that. So uh, we're thinking about ways to make uh, biking easier in the city. What's SOB? Uh, uh, yeah. SOB. So um, I'm trying to be cute here. Uh, so SOB is single occupancy vehicle. So, uh, do that. That's the last choice, right? And if you do have to use a beat driving on in your car, you want to make sure it's a fuel efficient vehicle. So uh, you know, there's more and more of those out there. Uh, in fact, uh, probably maybe you've heard of the uh, lead construction where uh, buildings get points and get right rankings, you know, gold, platinum. And part of that is that they have designated spots for fuel efficient vehicles uh, toward the front of the parking lot. Yes, it's in the plan. Right? So, so I kind of glossed over some of the uh, the actual recommendations in the plan because there's 60 some of them, but uh, I'll be happy to share the link to the uh, specific recommendations. But we don't have a regional transit plan. We tried the Metro moves uh, 10 years ago. That was a nice plan. I'd like, I'd like to see that plan come back. Yes, lots of people do, and, but right now that there's nothing adopted by uh, OKI, the regional council of governments, or even really the city on a formal transit plan for, for the region. So uh, part of the recommendation that top one is to actually go through a formal process where we at least have something on the shelf that says here's what we want to do, and then we can worry about paying and all that stuff later because that's always going to be difficult. And, and in the interim, there's all kinds of short-term improvements that are happening uptown. Is building a kind of a transit hub up by the hospitals in UC. Um, there's something lush. There's a bus rapid transit uh, light happening on the uh, Montgomery Road corridor where the bus won't stop at every stop, and the, the signals will be timed where the bus can get going much faster. And in some places, there might even be a dedicated lane for where the bus goes. So, um, that's what we're hoping to do in the short term. But uh, there really isn't a formal, full-blown plan. So I've seen this a little bit before, and the <coughs> freight rail improvement 
seems to be, I mean,